great crowd. Thank you so much. Now, I, I know that some of you think that it's cold tonight, but you have to visit us in Vermont. You really know what cold is. Let me thank a lecturer and Edgar and Kathleen uh, for their very generous uh, introductions. But mostly, let me thank all of you for coming out tonight. You know, when we began our campaign about six months ago, we had no money, we had no organization, and nobody knew who we were. We started off as a slight disadvantage. <laughs> but we have come a long way in the last six months. And I'm happy to tell you that we have hundreds of thousands of people all over this country who are volunteering on this campaign. We have received more individual campaign contributions than any campaign in the history of America. from California to Maine, where in total over 300,000 people have come out. So what is happening is that people in Nevada, people all over America, are fighting and demanding a political revolution. Young and old, black and white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, factory workers, nurses, college students, veterans, seniors on Social Security, teachers, single moms, people with disabilities, people from all walks of life are coming together and this is what they are saying. They are saying in a unified voice, enough is enough. What they are saying is that our great country and our government belongs to all of us and not just a handful of billionaires. And that is, they know that today's economy is rigged. They know that the average American is working longer hours for lower wages. They know that people in my state and here in Nevada are working two or three jobs. All right? And they know that while people are working so hard, trying to raise their families, almost all of the new wealth and income being generated in America today is going to the top 1%. And that is exactly what the American people are saying. That has got to end. The American people know that as a result of the disastrous Supreme Court decision on Citizens United. Yeah. You got that too? <laughs> true. They know that our campaign finance system is corrupt yeah. and that billionaire campaign contributors and their super PACs are undermining American democracy by buying candidates. And the American people and the people of Nevada are saying, we want our democracy back. And 
The American people understand that given the crises that we face today, it is too late for establishment politics, it is too late for establishment economics, it is time for real change. Now, I see all the burning signs out there. And I appreciate that very much. But let me say this to you. And what I'm going to tell you now is something that no other presidential candidate will tell you. And that is that the powers that be in Washington, Wall Street, corporate America, large campaign contributors, corporate media, are so powerful that no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can bring about the change that we need unless there is an unprecedented grassroots political movement which you Here's the truth. The truth is that these guys on Wall Street have more wealth and power than you can possibly imagine. But there is something that we have that they don't have, and that is what is here tonight, the people. stand together, when we do not allow them to divide us up as to whether or not we were born in America or born someplace else, when we don't allow them to divide us up as to whether we're black or white, whether we're gay, whether we're straight, whether we're men or whether we're women, when we stand together, we can accomplish anything. That is what this campaign is about. That's what a political revolution is about, is to tell each and every person here, you are enormously powerful people. And together we are going to make our government work for all of us and not just the wealthy few. And I can't do it alone. I think that's what the lecture was saying. We need to stand together. And it's not just winning Nevada. we got to do that. It's not just winning the Democratic nomination. It's not just winning the White House. It is the day after the election. We have got to continue to be involved. Yeah. One of the reasons that our campaign is doing well is that we are talking about the real issues that impact the middle class and working families of this country. And I want to touch on some of them this evening. And let me begin by telling you what many of you know, and that is that you are living today in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. But most people don't know that. Most people don't feel that because almost all of the wealth and income is going to a handful of families. Boom! In America today, we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth, and more in this country than at any time since 1928. <laughs> that is not what America is supposed to be about. And let me be very clear. There is something profoundly wrong when the top one-tenth of one percent, one-tenth of one percent, own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Did you all hear that? 
51%. There is something profoundly wrong with 58% of all new income created today is going to the top 1%. There is something profoundly wrong when in the last 30 years there has been a massive transfer of wealth, but it's gone in the wrong direction. It's gone out of the pockets of working families into the bank accounts of the top one-tenth of one percent. There is something profoundly wrong when we have seen in recent years a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires at the same time as we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country on earth. People on top should not be making billions when children in America go hungry. This type of rigged economy is not what America is supposed to be about. And together, we are going to build an economy that works for all of us, for works that works for the working class and the middle class, that works for the children, the elderly, the sick, and the poor. That is going to be our economy. there are any billionaires out there, I doubt it. But if there are, I want to send them a message. And that message is, you cannot have it all. You are not going to get huge tax breaks when children in this country are sleeping out on the streets. to continue sending our jobs to China when millions of people desperately need work right here. We are not going to be providing huge compensation packages for CEOs at the same time that you're cutting wages and health care and pensions. The greed of the billionaire class has got to end, and we are going to end it for them. You know, many of uh, my Republican colleagues, they suffer from a, you gotta be nice to them, because they suffer from a very serious illness. They just cannot remember history, recent history, and they suffer from amnesia. Amnesia is a very serious problem, and I want you to be nice to them. You see, they think that every problem that exists in the world is caused by Barack Obama. He did it all. It's raining, it's snowing, it's too hot, it's Barack Obama's fault. And they just have a very difficult time remembering what this country was like when President Bush left office. They seem to have forgotten, and again, don't be hard on them, it's an illness. Be kind, be kind. They seem to have forgotten that when Bush left office, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. And they are saying, you know, well, you're only growing 250,000 jobs a, a month now. That's not enough. Well, it's not enough. But growing 250,000 jobs a month, hell of a lot better than losing 800,000. And these guys who worry very much about the deficit, they seem to have forgotten that when Bush left office, we were running the largest deficit in the history of the country, $1.4 trillion. And also, it just kind of slipped their minds that Oh yeah, the world's financial crisis was on the verge of collapse. Other than that, nothing serious. But there is another reality. And while we have made great progress in the last seven years, 
The truth is that for the last 40 years, the great middle class of this country has been dispirited. All of you as workers have seen an explosion of technology and a huge increase in worker productivity. But the truth is that most of you are earning in inflation adjusted wages less money than people did 20 or 30 years ago. So you're producing more, but you're earning less. And the other thing that we don't hear about is what real unemployment is. Official unemployment is 5%. Real unemployment, including those people who have given up looking for work or are working part-time. Anybody here working part-time and they want to work full-time? You add that up together, real unemployment is almost 10%. And let me touch on an issue that gets very little discussion. And that is the tragedy of youth unemployment in this country. I asked some economists to study this issue for me, and this is what they found. 